But welcome everyone, thanks for coming. Um, today's workshop is on confidence. We're doing a, we'll pause in the middle for donations to yours humanly. The, this workshop is free, donations are not required. If you do donate, my organization will match them. And uh, Elaine generally charges for her time. So in lieu of that, she's also donating her time in service of us and also of this organization that she'll tell us about later. But thanks so much for coming. And um, Elaine, I'm gonna turn the time over to you to introduce yourself and then to just jump right in. Thank you so much. And if you could provide me with sharing rights, I could share my screen. Yeah. Oh, yes, I can do that. No problem. Welcome everybody. Thank you for joining. I know time is an energy and resource that is finite. So for the next 55-ish minutes with me, I'm hoping to support you in looking at confidence in a gentler way. You know, and I know Ariana has been using the language around being compassionate around this topic. So I definitely want to offer that today. And that's why I'm just calling it just a little shift, right? Shifting from skills to swagger, a workshop in supporting your confidence. I know with the times that we're in, we're all really well-versed and well-schooled on Zoom etiquette, but I would be remiss to just not always mention it. Um, I'm glad many cameras are on. I feel that's a way we get to stay engaged, get to know each other a little better. And if you're not speaking, please mute. And if you are speaking, let's, let's all support one another and remind each other to unmute. <laughs> and let's make space for others. I know some individuals may not want to come off camera, may not want to go off mute. So definitely use the chat box to engage and let us know what's on your mind. And let's strive for an open mind and an open heart today. And let's all just work from a position of positive intent. And with that, you know, there is a gift. I have a gift if you stay for the whole thing at the end. So I hope you stay. And it is something that I think will support you even after this workshop. And if you had to measure your confidence level at this moment, using the Zoom reactions, what would it be? Are you rocking the confidence? You're coming in hot like Joe Coy on his Netflix special, rocking your talent, your being and your energy. Give me a party hat. If you're satisfied and you're content with where you're at in your confidence level, give me the hand clamp on Zoom reactions. If you're feeling an inkling, give me a, give me a, <laughs> And if you're meh, give me a thumbs up. And if it's not so much, give me the whoa on the Zoom reactions. Just a little feel for where everyone's at. I think what I'm seeing a consensus of is feeling an inkling. So right in the middle. And we, when we work that middle, right? Working that middle is essential because that can get us above or below that line of feeling an inkling. So let's carry that momentum of feeling an inkling forward and let's see if we can move to satisfying by the end of this workshop. So thank you for giving me a, a iteration of where everyone's at. And then next, if you don't know me, because you know this is a new audience for me, my name is Elaine Dazan. I've been working in corporate for like 25 years. I launched my coaching practice two years ago. I I'm going on my third coaching certification that I'm hoping to finish at the end of this year. And I bring a lot of cross-disciplinary experience to my coaching. It's, you know, the leadership coaching and development, building trust with teams. I believe in the iterative process of Kaizen or the lean methodology where we work in two week sprints, where we integrate a new skill. We iterate that skill over time. And whenever we're building a new habit or learning a new skill, it takes at least 21 days to even get familiar with it. Sometimes as long as 60 to 90 days before it becomes part of our daily practice. And as long as 256 days before it becomes a part of our life. So this idea of iteration is really important to me as we learn to think about what's most meaningful to us, what intentions we wanna operate with. And with a bit of data, with a bit of pause and reflection practice, it all builds this process of what I think is generally just life, the gift of life that we have, informing that life with our intentions and putting small sweet steps and actions towards it. So that's what I've been working with. And I'm a mom of two. I've been married for like 20-ish years. 
not tell my husband, I don't know for sure. And I'm an avid runner. I run about 30 to 35 races this year. I'm going to, re I'm registered for 35 races, going from 5Ks to half marathons, road races and trail races. So when I think about this idea of confidence and moving from skills to swagger, it aligns with my running experience. It aligns with my musical experience as a drummer. And whenever we're up to something new or big in life, that's when we're tested. And that's where we're gonna look at today are the kinds of tests that life throws at us. So with that, I think we've got a small enough cohort on this call. And I would just love to get to know you all a little better. So in about two minutes each, give me the lowdown. Give me your name, where you're zooming in from and your purpose, right? We all have a job title, we all have roles, but there's something that we're wanting to contribute in this world. So let me know what your purpose is and what do you hope to get out of our time together? So I would love to just get to know you all a little more. And with that, um, I'll start with Ariana and then we'll just go popcorn style yeah. and go around the room. Cool, yeah, thanks for doing this. Um, Ariana, I use she and they pronoun. I'm joining from Vancouver, Washington. Um, I work in Vancouver and in Portland. My purpose and job titles, um, I'm a therapist and clinical supervisor and business consultant. And I feel like my purpose is um, being a mom and supporting therapists and helping more people start businesses. That, that last one is like such a big passion for me. Um, what I hope to get out of our time together I just want to hear something new about confidence. When Elaine and I first talked, it was about how confidence is like a skill set that you can practice. And that was a new way for me of thinking about it because I either thought like you are confident or you're not. So I really like this idea of like, it's just a skill that you practice and then you can develop. So that's, that's what I want to hear more about today. Um, Zach, you're next to me on my grid here. So I'm going to call on you. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, so my name is Zach. Um, I am also in Portland, in my basement. Um, right now, I am um, getting ready to decide if I'm going to go into private practice or group practice um, after just graduating with my MSW. Um, and my purpose, I mean, I guess it's to help relieve suffering, um, and, which is sort of broad, but I like that one. Um, and then as far as, you know, what to get out of our time together, um, I, you know, I usually think of confidence as like either, you know, you have skills and so you just, it's a byproduct of having skills or it's an attitude towards acquiring the skills um, that, uh, and, and I feel like that's hoping, I'm sort of hoping I'm going to get out of today, but I'm also <laughs> looking forward to being surprised. Um, Let's see, uh, uh, Amalia? Hey, my name is Amalia Miral Rio. I'm in Detroit, Michigan. Um, purpose, I think I would probably answer this differently every time someone asks, but I think today what's coming to mind is thinking about really just wanting to support people and accepting themselves and knowing themselves so that they can contribute to the greater good and sort of fulfill their own purpose. Um, I'm a therapist in private practice, been in private practice for just over two years. Um, and what I'm hoping to get out of my time today, our time together is that I just started a new course um, learning about psychodynamic therapy. It's like an intensive training program. And so being back in the role of student is a time that is can be for me and probably others, like a trigger of a time when my confidence can be really tested because I'm back in the beginner's seat. And um, so this workshop really called to me for that reason. And I don't have gallery view on, so I'm not, I can't see anyone else. I can't figure out how to, so if someone else wants to jump in. Hi, I'm, I'm Sam. I, I'm in Portland, Oregon, and um, 
I am not 100% sure what my job title is. I'm trained in Hakomi and somatica sex and relationship therapy or coaching um, and some other things. I'm really into dance, um, ecstatic dance, five rhythms, authentic movement. Um, and um, my purpose, I, I also feel like that could change on a daily basis. Um, and I think uh, oftentimes what, what is, what's up for me right now is um, supporting people in befriending themselves. So a lot of uh, what Amalia was saying. Um, and um, I am jumping back in to trying to figure out what it is, how I'm gonna do that. And, um, and I'm feeling a lot more confident than I have in the past, but I still, that's been a big struggle for me to, to even start um, a practice of some kind is my confidence. So I'm looking forward to learning lots today. And I can't see anybody else, but people who have gone. So somebody else will just have to jump in. I'll jump in. Um, I'm Wendy, she, her pronouns. Um, I'm zooming in from Portland, Oregon. And I would say my purpose these days has been feeling oriented towards um, community building. I've always been somebody who feels really tapped in and curious about um, being like a, a connective bridge towards people. Um, but most recently I started a new role this past February um, as a mental health therapist in a, like a community setting. So it still feels like a newer role for me. And it's something that I've always wanted to explore and I'm still working towards my license as a CSWA. Um, and I would like to start a private practice um, once I am licensed. So um, yeah, it's been feeling good, but I definitely do feel that imposter syndrome often. Um, and something I hope to get out of our time together, I think really relates to imposter syndrome. Something that I've learned really recently, and there's like research to, to support this, is that it doesn't necessarily matter how long you've been in the role that you've been um, to indicate that you have like what it takes to be um, successful in, in your role. Um, and that's something that I, that's so counter to what I've learned and what I've like felt in, in myself and in my body. And I'm like, oh, well maybe once I get to like a 10 year mark or 20 year mark as being a therapist, like then I'll be confident and then I'll figure it out. But actually like what I've re learned really recently is like, you don't actually have to have the years of experience um, behind you. So like, I really want to get as like confident or as like good as possible, as quickly as possible. Um, and that's what I'm interested in. So thanks for hosting. Oh, and Amy, go for it. Um, so my name is Amy and I'm zooming in from Beaverton, Oregon. And um, so I just, just recently started a private practice with Ariana's help. And so, um, and I think my purpose, I, I'm kind of with you, um, Wendy, um, just like supporting my community and my family. Um, I think that's huge for me. And um, I am hoping to just get out, just feeling a little bit more confident in my um, ability as a private practitioner. It, I've turned down three job offers recently in the last like month because I am wanting to really start this private practice, but I am scared that I did that and um, feeling, yeah. So I'm just really wanting to, um, I really wanna do this private practice and um, at the same time feeling kind of overwhelmed with it all. So I'm excited to be here and, and learn more. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I think we covered everybody. Thank you so much for sharing. And yes, to Wendy, um, that research is so potent, right? There was a Zanger Folkman research. I don't know if that's the study you're pointing to, but that idea that confidence increases over time, that's all great. What opportunities do we miss along the way is the question, right? 
So that's the heart of, you know, this attitude around confidence that Zach mentioned, right? Is it a skill? Is it an attitude? And that's where swagger comes into play. It's when skill and attitude meets up. And that's what we're going to get to. So thank you for your introductions. And I just wanted to go ahead and just quickly go through our agenda. We did the welcome in. We're going to take a look at a tool, a traditional SWOT analysis. So this might be familiar to some of you. This might be new, but this is a great way to look at skills. And then the reframe on SWAT that can support you in moving towards the swagger that we talk about. And a process on how you could revisit this and iterate through it and put some more purpose and heart towards the skill building. And then we'll close at the end. And when you're, and if you stay, I'll give you a download of a workbook that breaks this down even further. So that's the agenda and you know SWAT, right? SWAT is an assessment tool that businesses use often. You know, you could use this to outline strengths, opportunities, weaknesses, and threats as it relates to standing up a business, tactical planning, how you operate, market research, team development, talent flow. So this is a very familiar model that people use in business that you can do to assess your teams. You can assess an organization or even a nonprofit board with all of the people, what skills do individuals or organizations bring to the table? And based on whatever weaknesses or threats that show up, you can pivot those strengths to address those gaps. And then you could start building plans to close the gap if you're a sales organization. And I know this particular market in the Portland area is low in sales and I've got strong salespeople. I point my strong salespeople to that weak market area. So that's how I've been used to looking at SWAT. And then when I had to do something for myself, SWAT took on a different meaning. And that's where I wanted to take us through, where we're gonna reframe SWAT just a little bit, where strengths, that's a good, basis to start, right? Strengths are those skills and talents you bring to your role or to the contribution you're making. And these are the capabilities and talents we bring to our work, how we do our work. And one of the lean in organization research studies show that the soft skills, the way we listen, the way we reflect and acknowledge, that's not a technical skill, according to some businesses. But it is a skill of building connection, trust, and relationship with people that is taken for granted. And based on another study, uh, one of the studies from Cornell in 2003 is that people, like women, underestimate their skills more than men. So there was a study where, um, let's, what, let's assess your science ability. Women scored themselves on average to six, at 6.5, whereas men came in at 7.6. Then when it was time to actually take a test on the scientific matter, everyone came out the same in terms of an average answer of 7.5. So as we think about strengths, are we claiming them? Are we owning them? And are we not putting every strength we have on the table is the question. So think about that as we think about this idea of skilling up our confidence. And instead of weaknesses, I found a great moment to reframe weakness into woe moments. The moments we learn about skills that we didn't know we had, or that moment where we experience something that leaves us breathless and joyous about, I didn't, I didn't know you could do that. Can you teach me that? Can I build a partnership and collaboration with you? And it's that moment where we get to acknowledge the possibility of a chance to do something better. Not that I'm operating from a deficiency because I don't know, it's operating from a position of, whoa, I didn't know that. I'm curious to know that. That is so interesting. You know, what book can I read? What website can I go to? Who else knows this stuff that I don't? And it's just that breakthrough or something out of left field that when we are attentive to life, and what it throws at us, we have more of an ability to acknowledge that woe moment 
and say, let me just dig a little more. And then, you know, opportunities are those chances that we get to exercise that strength, to take in that woe moment and think about, given the skills that I have, the skills that I'm growing, what do I hope to achieve or gain in my business with a specific client, with a specific class? So to Amalia, who's getting tested right now with a new course, right? And here, here's an opportunity to tap into a beginner's mindset again. And that capacity to say yes to that. That's the skill to say yes to. I know this is something that is wowing me out because it's a, a new class. It's a new environment. But oh my goodness, the opportunity to learn this and get back into beginner's mind. How do we look at these moments in terms of, you know, the SWOT analysis that I'm offering you today? And then the T, instead of threats, even the word threat, if you have a Zoom reaction when you hear that, I know what my Zoom reaction is. It is a fix. OMG, I am not, no. You're already stopping when you hear threats, which is why I had a problem with the SWOT analysis. And I reframed it as truth. I, you know, the truth is, it is a new thing that I'm up to. It is a new practice that I'm launching. I am a new business owner and I don't know a lot of stuff. So let's be compassionate to that. Let's be compassionate and gentle to the idea that these truths that emerge in these new situations, how can we shift that response that we are all programmed with? And I, I just really admire all of you and what you're studying. And I think we've all heard a version of this, right? Our bodies are programmed. Our brain is programmed to keep us safe. So here we are doing something new our body is already moving to a fight, flight, freeze, or fawn response. And I'm just gonna, so let's be truthful that we know that about ourselves. We wanna stay safe, but yet it's in these moments of uncertainty, fear, doubt, and newness, that's where we grow. And it's in those moments that we get to grow our skills down this continuum towards swagger. So this reframe on SWAT is what I wanted to share with you because this is a moment where we can really work it out. And what I found in using this model, it's an empowering way to claim my strengths and my skills. <laughs> Excuse me, I got a cough. And I don't know where my... Yeah. It's an empowering way to claim our skills and it's a chance to grow and ease ourselves into this growth mindset that we all can embrace from time to time. And there's a possibility to hold space for ourselves and others as we look at skill building with using the SWOT analysis. So this is where I wanted to just offer some time to allow you to do your own SWOT analysis. Like, let's make this a bit of a working thing where you can make this chart on a piece of paper. I will upload a template of it also. So if you have access to a printer, you could totally download this and print it out real quick. And, you know, after we do this exercise, I can tell you more about yours humanly. So take like five minutes and Claim those strengths, acknowledge those skills about yourself that you may easily take for granted or mm, everybody does it, but does everybody do it in a way that's unique to you is the question, right? And then take a look at the woe moments that have blown you away lately. Like, what are you learning? What do you hope to learn? And then the opportunities that these new things are unfolding. So I think for Amy, who turned down three job offers, what is the opportunity for you as you launch your practice and take this courageous step in being a business owner and a private practice entity? And then for all of us, you know, the truth, you know, what is, what's really stopping me 
in moving my confidence level. We'll take about one more minute. Okay, so I know five minutes may not be enough, but I wanted to offer a tool and a glimpse of what this kind of skill assessment can offer you. And just by like a raise of hand, not that I'll call on you, did anyone experience any surprise? Like, I didn't know that about myself. Amalia. Wendy, yeah. And that's what I think these kinds of assessments and what I call pause and reflections. Like when we take time to really pause and reflect on things, it's a little different when you have an intentional prompt or an intentional way of like writing something down. And it's just a slight shift from journaling where journaling is an account of what happened to me that day, like a diary. But when you pause and reflect, with a specific question in mind, it moves you into a different mindset of really taking a deeper look at 
what is in front of me right now and being very vulnerable to that. So thank you for doing that. And, you know, this is something that could be a baseline that you could jump off from or revisit time and time again. And so here, any questions so far, anybody? Um, Elaine, I'm wondering if you're finding that the more people take like account or a record of their strengths, if that directly correlates to the confidence they're feeling in those specific tasks or duties. I mean, that seems like a really obvious question, but I'm still curious. Yeah, I mean, eight out of 10 people struggle with self-esteem. And, you know, when people struggle with self-esteem and there's a, a moment where we sit with that struggle and not take action on it by looking at it, we don't afford the opportunities for ourselves to move in any kind of direction to either deepen that strength or skill or know that about ourselves and orient ourselves towards a growth, towards a development or to a partnership or building a connection with somebody that I'm never gonna learn this but I know that person knows. And if I could partner with that person, my life gets a little easier. Cause maybe that's something I don't have time to develop. Maybe that's something I'm not interested in. But man, if I know somebody who does love doing that, I could support them and we could have this connection and support each other in the process. And when we're truthful about that, we free up energy to do other things and learn other things or deepen the strengths we do want to deepen. And when we continue to build this confidence, there's, a, there's like, not that we're all here to make money, but there are statistics that show $7,000 are, you know, there's a $7,000 difference between those who are confident in their role and not on average. So it correlates to saying yes to opportunities. It correlates to saying yes to building new networks and new connections that when you can know where you're at in this tool or understand your strengths, your opportunities. Whoa, I don't like, I don't, I didn't know that. And the truth is, the truth is this. And with that truth, I can move forward. Was that helpful? Yeah, so kind of taking into account is going to help move you forward. Yeah. If you feel the lack of confidence, you take an account of things figure out where you're at and then it helps you move forward with the, with the activity. Mm -hmm. And writing it down helps because, uh, you know, we, we retain more when we write things down. We, we take action more when we put a date on it. Sam? Can you give me like several examples of truths? It, it was just hard for me to- Sure good truths about my, my so exam. let me so I'll say you know as a drummer I was uh, really good at reading music and playing a single percussion instrument that was a good strength that I had uh, my whoa moment was I can't read melodic notes like a piano so I didn't necessarily want to play xylophone marimba or vibes because it wasn't just beats, it was beats on a note. But my school I attended had the opportunity to use an educational budget to buy xylophone marimbas and melodic percussion instruments. And they encouraged me to go for it and just learn how to read these notes. And the truth is, I really didn't want to. I didn't know if I could marry rhythm with melody in time for a performance. So I had to back away from that opportunity and say, you know, I'm gonna need to take more classes. And if anyone on the percussion ensemble would like to go before me, I invite you to do it because I don't think I'm gonna learn it in time. So that was like an example from like a musical creative process that I just had to admit to myself that, you know, I'm not as skilled as I wanna be and I'm just gonna need a little more time to learn. Or the truth is, you know, like when I had kids, I really didn't know what I was doing half the time. And I was just, you know, I had to admit I needed help and I needed support. And I joined a, um, a breastfeeding group because I just did not know how to get that baby to latch. And I felt like a failure as a mom because I didn't naturally do it. Was that helpful, Sam? 
Okay. So any other questions? All right, so let me tell you a little about Yours Humanly. Um, these donations are completely optional. Yours Humanly is a nonprofit that supports children in need around the world with educational access to resources and tools. They make learning more hospitable in hot areas like Cambodia. They provide K through 12 scholarships for orphans in India. They've helped Haiti recover from disasters with back to school backpacks. In the United States, they stand up computer labs, put out Chromebooks, especially during the pandemic. They were able to come through with Chromebooks for a Title IX school district in Northern California. So they've done great work. They've served over 39,000 children. They've awarded over 500 uh, scholarships and they've completed 121 projects. So this small but mighty nonprofit does global work and they're always looking to bridge that digital gap in a way that supports kids in learning and in literacy. And this is where I get a really sweet opportunity to marry all that love of racing with all of this great work that this nonprofit does. They are hosting a break a sweat for education 5k on October 1st. My kids will be running with me and our goal is to raise $3,500 as a team. This is one of 35 races that I do um, this year. And I only fundraise for one. I only fundraise for this one because this is the race that will honor my mom's passing. Um, she died in 1987 in a car accident on October 10th. So I run this race in honor of her and I'm fundraising $3,500 for that 35th year she's been gone all in the hopes that we could support an initiative in the Philippines in her hometown and build a computer lab in her honor. So if you're interested in uh, making a donation towards yours humanly to support this race and this effort, I'll chat out that link. You know, as I said, totally optional. And it's just no, the, the impact that these funds make to these kids and to our organization and for us that support it it is one that is incredibly purpose driven and you know that through line of just connecting education um, is really important to me because my mom always raised me with this idea that you know knowledge is power and giving kids that opportunity to build that knowledge is is an important step to take as somebody who wants to create community and connection thanks Elaine. Okay. yeah so um if you do donate if you want to private message me then i'll match your donation or Lloyd Collective law. Um, and Lloyd Collective is, the main thing I do in Lloyd Collective is an eight week program to start a private practice. So if you're interested in starting one, let me know and I can help you. Uh, Ariana, <clears throat> sorry. Yeah. Is uh, Venmoing you an option like last time or should we just directly? Oh, yeah. You can do that and then I'll match it that way too. That works fine. Yeah. yeah, and I think last time we just did it to my clinical Venmo. I'll put that in the chat. Cool. Yeah, if that's easier, you can do that and then I'll donate both of them. Thanks, Eric. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna throw in another handout here. It is what I call the skills to swagger continuum. And this is where we take those skills, those strengths, right? And every time we get to demonstrate that skill, over time, these skills become core competencies. These are the core competencies that we do. So even just listening, developing a listening skill can grow into a core competency of reflective listening. A skill to say thank you can grow into a core competency of acknowledgement where that gratitude practice is married towards an acknowledgement that takes that gratitude to a higher level. And as our core competencies grow, right, even in business management, right, saying hello, going to a networking event, at some point, saying hello and networking grows it into a competency of collaboration and building partnerships. So as these competencies grow, and then we're at a moment where we can teach, mentor, advocate, coach others, that's your leadership emerging. 
This is you emerging as a person who can pull things together, communicate a message, share something with others, and move people through a discourse of conversation where there's a group learning. That's leadership. That is the leadership you bring to your business. That is a leadership you could bring to a class. That is a leadership you can bring to a conference. And at some point, this leadership starts becoming your brand. It speaks to how you lead, why you lead, the core values that you're bringing to your leadership role. And your brand becomes this thing that you stand for. So a lot of us are operating from a position of supporting others. That's part of our brand. So how we lead that based on these core competencies that, learn, that we learn from the most basic of skill can build our brand. And then all of a sudden, when we're moving with flow and joy, and there's this virtuous cycle of revisiting our skills and continuing to deepen these competencies and vocalize our leadership and show up in spaces and places that we may normally shy away from. That is the swagger we bring into this world. That is the swagger this brand has even before you speak, even before you enter a room. Now, I don't know if you all caught the Emmys last night, but if you've seen the Emmys or you're gonna see sooner or later on the social media feeds or whatever feed that you may be visiting. When Cheryl Lee Ralph accepted her Emmy Award after being in the business for 40 years as outstanding supporting actress in a comedy because of her role in Abbott Elementary, can we all agree she showed up with swagger where her skill of singing was clearly demonstrated in her acceptance speech as a leader and activist, she has built this brand of being somebody for the people, a gift for women to own their confidence. And when she said, no one can ever, ever, ever believe in you but you, that is the fire. That is the confidence. That is the swagger we all have within ourselves. And it's a continuum, it looks like a continuum but wherever your strengths reside, it can move through this. So just as skilled as we may be in something, we go back to class, we're learning a new skill again. And hopefully over time, that skill becomes a competency. And that competency starts showing up in our leadership because we're teaching it. And we retain 90% of what we teach. And if that competency becomes a part of our brand and we start owning it, and we think about Cheryl Lee Ralph, right? The whole hack of this is that swagger can show up at any point because of your capacity to say yes to that opportunity in that moment. To say, yes, I know this about myself. I know the truth is it's gonna take me a long time or it'll take me a short time, but I've got to make some allowances and shift some things around to say yes to this opportunity. And the more often we say yes, we build those skills over time. And it's really claiming that yes, yes to who I really am. Yes, I wanna be the person that supports people. Yes, I wanna be a community builder. Yes, I have some skills I need to practice over and over again. Yes, I don't have to practice this. I've got this, I'm already there, but I always leave a little room to know a little more because that's where you know Swagger can reveal something and a depth to something that you may not have seen before. And yeah, it, it could take a little, you know, it's, it's that swagger. It's the way you say it. It's how you say it, how often you say yes, didn't just keep going. And to Ariana's point, right? This whole skill set building is something that we would revisit in a pause and reflect, reflection practice where after today, we think about our skills with the following prompts. How am I feeling right now? What new things am I learning about my skills? In what ways have I supported others with these skills? Where have I grown in my competencies? What type of brand am I building? And with some detail, write down a moment when you felt that swagger or moved with it to remind yourself that I did it. I can do it again. Or I'm not feeling it 
and you have something to look back on that says, I did do it. I did. And this pause and reflection practice, if you do this every two weeks, you'll start noticing some trends, some common stopping points, a reoccurring theme, a theme of a skill that you may need to practice a little more or find a different avenue to skill up on it or find a new application or program or somebody else that can support you in getting that skill cared for. And it's every two weeks and after 90 days, so after three months and after six reflections, you know, what, what were your key learnings? You know, what skill emerged that you didn't know you had? Or, wow, that was really fun and easy to learn about. Or somebody really benefited from something I know and they got to learn about something or they had a breakthrough because I was able to deliver this during this session, during this meeting, during this workshop. So this is something that I'll share with you too. It is a template that you could just print out and just do it over time. I found that asking the same questions over and over again helps you see those trends and insights more clearly because you're answering the same question over and over again. Elaine, would you go back um, two yeah. slides? Let's see, the slide before this one where you showed like this progression. Part of what I'm understanding is that if you have something that you're trying to do or an area where you notice you don't feel confident, part of the first job is to figure out what are the skills needed to do this thing. Yes. And then to practice those skills until you get decent at them and then look for an opportunity to teach the skills to someone else. Mm -hmm. And then through doing all of that, you develop more confidence around it. That's part of the process that I'm hearing you offer. Yes, yes, yes. And it's that capacity to say yes to all of those opportunities. That here's a big skill that sounds complex, but if I break it down into smaller skills, I start practicing that saying yes to that skill building. And then it is a foundational skill for the next one. And then that one starts building up towards a competency. Any other questions? Any thoughts from anyone about what I've shared so far? Yeah, um, Elaine, I, I like it. I, I like your reframe on the... Um woe moments and uh truths and just sort of that little twist in language that gets you approaching your goals more than feeling like kind of overwhelmed by them um it's a fun way to put together a map of like hey what i'm, I'm doing pretty good so far here's where i'm gonna go and then that, that idea of checking in on a regular basis i think is really useful so um yeah just appreciate your model so thank you thank you it's a trip right it's a trip how two little word changes can really open up and just put you in a state of, I'm, I'm further along than I'm giving myself credit for. <laughs> totally, totally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're so hard it changed on the ourselves. emotion. <laughs> yeah, we're so hard on ourselves. So I'm grateful that you, you saw value in that because that's precisely why it's important to, to reframe weaknesses to woe moments and threats to truth. Yeah. And it gets you looking outside yourself more like, what is woeing me? You know, like, let's take note of that. Yeah. And, and it's, it's always interesting when you do, because once you point your energy and attention to that, you're going to look for that. It's like buying a new car, right? It's that phenomenon. If I'm going to buy a black Toyota Camry, not, not even black, that's too common. If I'm going to buy this aqua Toyota Camry, I'm going to see more aqua Toyota Camrys out there. Because now my, my, I'm looking for it. So if you're looking yeah. for woe moments and if you're looking for truth that your strengths can support, and as those strengths support those areas of growth, you can say yes to many more opportunities to existing in your ones. Yeah, totally true. Yeah, I, use, I like to think of it as uh, my, the metaphor I use is like when you go out planning to take pictures, all of a sudden everything around you looks much more like interesting and pretty than it did when you were just walking down the street. Right. 
Well, I know we're at 1255. So because you all stayed, I'm going to give you a workbook that I made just for you. And it's free. I'm going to be putting it on my website and selling it because y'all forced me to make it. <laughs> but this will give you those two pages that I shared, plus a whole grounding exercise to get into it. Offer yourself a little more time to do your SWOT analysis with more intention. And then, you know, a spot to put down those dates, like every two weeks. Every two weeks, I'm going to just spend some time with myself and intentionally think about what skills I want to move along this continuum. Or, you know, sometimes you have too much swagger and you got to go back to some beginner's mind and go, maybe there's something I need to like temper just a little bit because that did not land the way I wanted it to land. And it's okay because we're all trying new things and in different ways. So this is the simple compilation of what I talked about with a bit more depth and verbiage. You could write all over it and please take it. And if you find value in it, just let me know. Um, I think I, I could do a follow-up email, Ariana, with how to get in touch with me. And I invite you to follow me on Instagram. It's just a place where I put life's reflections. I always think about life whispering lessons to us. So I share what life is whispering to me in hopes that others may offer themselves that moment of tapping into their own inner wisdom and acknowledge that we probably have a lot more of the answers than we think. We just don't pause and reflect enough to lean into our own wisdom to guide us. So that's where my Instagram comes into play. It's just a general reminder that, you know, we're all here for a purpose and sometimes we just need to support each other and remind ourselves that we do have the answers. And I'm all in the other places, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. I do Oreo cookie reviews and movie reviews on there. My website is elainedesign.com if you ever want to hang out. And if you want any workshop follow-up to talk further about any of this stuff, or even if you want an accountability partner where you think, okay, in 60 days, I'm going to do a coffee chat with Elaine and we could take a look at what I'm learning so far, hit me up. It's free. You could just go onto my website, set up a 30-minute coffee chat, and just, you know, let me support you in seeing how your skills are moving along this line towards swagger. And, you know, at some point, you know, did we move from feeling an inkling to something a little different? And is that possible? Thank you so much, Elaine. This was wonderful. Thanks everyone for being here. Any follow-up questions before we wrap up? Just want to say thank you so much for hosting this and thank you, Elaine. Um, I'm really excited to, I, I don't think I've ever been excited about a workbook before, but I feel like really excited to dig into this. So thank you. Oh, that's You're awesome. welcome. And thank yeah, you, thank Ariana, you. for the opportunity to uh, partner with you on this.